as many of you already know, Kyle Rittenhouse is at Kent State University today, and not everybody is happy about it. One of those that's not happy is Paul Prediger, or Prediger, I forget, uh, otherwise known as Gage Grosskreutz. And I know what you're thinking. I can't believe that he's telling the world Gage Grosskreutz's real name. Well, you'll see why in a moment. It doesn't matter. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With cold, blunt analysis, cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Okay, so Paul, or Gage, is not happy about Kyle being at Kent State. Let's hear him out. Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us here on this lovely afternoon. By the way, man, what the hell happened to you? What's this look that you have? I remember during the trial, you got up on the stand, and I was thinking, damn, man, that dude cleans up pretty good. I mean, you know, you had the hairdo rocking you had that nice suit and all that i imagine there were some females out there that were swooning over you maybe even some of them kyle rittenhouse supporters okay well maybe not them but i'm sure that a lot of females out there said hey man look at that swank look that he's sporting there and now we have this oh okay dude i don't know who talked you into that but uh I wouldn't be taking any more advice from him or her. My name is Paul Prediger. <clears throat> Many of you know me as Gage Grosskreis. A uh, Gage, it doesn't do any good to change your name if you tell everybody what your new name is. Okay, my name is Gage Grosskreis, but man, there's a lot of death threats out there. I better change it to protect my identity. So I'll change it to Paul Prediger. And then he gets up in front of the microphone. I'm Paul Prediger. Formerly Gage Grosskreutz. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem like a very good strategy there, Gage. On August 25th, 2020, Kyle Rittenhouse shot me in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Since November 2021, I've chose to remain silent and not speak publicly regarding Kyle Rittenhouse. And by the way, I, I was pretty hard on this guy for a long time. I even made false claims about his criminal background. Well, I didn't know any better at the time. I was going by what was known. Um, he corrected me in private email and I corrected the record on my YouTube channel. So let's be very clear. He is not a convicted felon. He was never convicted of a felony. The one burglary felony that he had was plea bargained down to a misdemeanor. Also, it's pretty obvious now, in fact, it has been proven that a CCW that night in Kenosha was valid. Okay, so I want everybody to be clear on this. Not a convicted felon had the gun legally that night. Now, there is an issue about whether he was supposed to carry his uh, ID card with him and it had to be valid. Yeah, it looks like a pretty minor offense. And the events surrounding that night having preferring my anonymity and safety over revisiting a traumatic period in my life. But that silence ends today. Anonymity? I mean, Gage, you just told everybody your new name. Okay. You do you. While I've simply tried to live my life and not relive those moments, Kyle Rittenhouse has taken a different path. He has used every moment to gloat and to make light of taking life. As if that were not enough. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if Kyle has gloated about taking lives. Now, maybe he has. I'm just not aware of it. Kyle has embraced and been embraced by those who peddle hateful rhetoric, who believe in nationalism that excludes those who do not look like or think like them. So Kyle has embraced these organizations. I would like to know which organizations you're talking about. I'm not denying it, but I haven't heard him embracing these organizations. If you're talking about the Proud Boys, I don't think you got anything going there. And certainly not the Ku Klux Klan or any neo-Nazi organizations. So I'm wondering who you're talking about. And who have sought to amplify a troubling desire for violence against supposed political 
cultural and religious enemies. I am not here today at Kent State to sell you a book that somebody else wrote or a full body armor military kit that I didn't design. All right, come on, Gage, be a little fair here. Nobody writes their own autobiographies. Michelle Obama didn't write her own autobiography. Neither did Hillary Clinton. Writing a biography is a lot of work and it takes a special talent. Unfortunately, Michael Quinn Sullivan, uh, Kyle's ghostwriter, well, actually, he's not really a ghostwriter since Kyle told everybody who he was. Um, he's not a particularly good biographer. And that book is not of high quality at all. I have criticized the living crap out of it on my channel. And while I'm a Kyle supporter, I am not a supporter of that book that he wrote. Okay, that Michael Quinn Sullivan wrote, okay? But again, uh, just because Kyle didn't write the book, that means nothing. You're not expected to write your own autobiography. Uh, as far as the body armor that he didn't design, uh, this is one of those, basically, Kyle sold his name for it. This is super common. And there are tons of examples of this. Vince Young Steakhouse. You think that Vince Young designed the menu? You think that Vince Young is back there cooking your steaks for you? Vince doesn't even really get any money from it. They just bought his name. These are called signature series, and I'm sorry, but you're trying to make it out to be like some big deal. It's not. This is done all the time. Or a subscription to an anti-woke payment processor, or to sell you the lies of BLM. The anti-woke payment processor? I don't know who he's referring to. As far as the lies of BLM, that used to be in the title of his talks, but they've taken that out because Kyle claimed that he didn't want it in there. It was not his idea. Well, that's Kyle's claim. I have no reason to believe that he's lying about that. It was a bad idea. It's called clickbait. They wanted to stir up a whole bunch of interest in his speeches by sticking that in there. And unfortunately, it had a negative consequence in that it riled up the student population. Uh, that was just a bad idea, but okay. That speaker is across campus today, and his name is Kyle Rittenhouse. And for an extra $37, he'll even autograph his book for you. Okay, so what? You don't like it? Don't pay the 37 bucks. Uh, I don't expect that you're going to. But what I am here to do is to stand with the students of Kent State who have had enough. Uh, you're going to stand with some of the students from Kent State. Don't forget, some of the students from Kent State are going to go see Kyle Rittenhouse talk and even maybe support him. Enough of Kyle and his rhetoric. Enough of the celebration of loss of human life. Enough of the flawed logic that because a 17-year-old who shot me and killed two others with an illegally obtained firearm... Uh, nope. At least it certainly didn't break Wisconsin law. Wisconsin doesn't ban straw purchases of weapons for others. Now, did it break federal law? Probably not. And the reason why is Dominic Black kept ownership of the rifle and only allowed Kyle to borrow it. Um, the, the federal deal is not quite as black and white as the state one. The state one is absolutely clear. That was a legal purchase. No doubt about it. And if you disagree, uh, go to the link in the description where I show you the actual law and prove to you that the purchase of the gun did not break state law. And Gage, I think you already know this, but the people you're standing in front of don't. And so you're playing to the crowd here, a little dishonest. An illegally carried firearm is... Nope. And this one you definitely know better. For it to be a crime, you got to find a statute that the person violates. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to find one. That was settled during the trial. But again, the audience you're standing in front of doesn't know that. And I think you're taking advantage of that. Is now somehow qualified to be a champion of gun rights. No I agree with Gage on this one. Okay, um, Kyle Rittenhouse is not qualified to be a champion of gun rights. I've said it from the day one, and I told Kyle this on the phone. I said, dude, I don't need you championing my Second Amendment rights. You're too controversial.
but he's doing it anyway. Um, my job is to give Kyle advice and for him to ignore it. <laughs> of course, he's blocked me, so it's hard for me to give him advice anymore. Oh, well. Enough of the sad fragility that proclaiming and accepting Black Lives Matter, because they do, somehow devalues or threatens white lives. Enough of the lies and the deceit that has been told by Kyle Rittenhouse for over three years about what actually happened. In well, we kind of know what actually happened, uh, Gage. We saw it all on video. But you're going to tell us what he said that was wrong, right? Okay. In Kenosha, August 25th, 2020. So I ask all of those of you who are... Hey, wait a minute. You're not going to tell us? <laughs> you said that Kyle has been out there telling lies about what really happened. Well, okay. Tell us what really happened then. What are those lies? What did he get wrong? We saw it all on video. Okay, there are some issues that you're going to have to grapple with, and so will he, including, did you point his pistol at him when he shot you? On the stand, you said you did. But lately, you've been saying, no, I didn't. Well, that's going to be an issue for the upcoming civil trial. If it actually takes place, I don't think it will. But other than that, I don't know where the disagreement is. Uh, did Kyle threaten people earlier in the night? Well, I think Dave Hancock is making that kind of claim, but uh, you have to have evidence of it. And I haven't seen anything, but I'm more than willing to entertain it. But I want proof. I don't want claims. It had better not be some out-of-focus fuzzy crap. I have uh, no use for that. If you're interested to join me and these student organizers behind me and in this crowd to come to the Oscar Ritchie Hall for a hopefully enlightening teaching experience. Because students deserve an alternative to the hate and division that Kyle Rittenhouse seeks to sow on campus. And with that being said, I'm very thankful for my invitation here and being able to be amongst y'all. I applaud the fact that they're going to have a teach-in uh, somewhere else for those that do not like Kyle, don't support him to go and peaceably learn something. That's great. But I have a feeling a lot of people are not going to be too happy with that. Uh, they're going to want to tangle with Kyle's supporters. So let, let's see how it goes. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse is showing up on our campus. And because of him, there's going to be a lot of those gun people. And they're scary as hell. They're itching to kill. They're looking to provoke. We can't have this dangerous element on our campus. So let's go over there and get in their faces and antagonize the crap out of them. <laughs> uh, you can't make this thing up. But at any rate, Gage, uh, you know, go back to your old hairdo, man. That that don't cut it. And uh, go back to Gage Grosskreutz. <laughs> the whole Paul Prediger thing, it just didn't work. Now, I know what you're thinking. Man, he's really stirred up against Kyle Rittenhouse. Keep in mind, Gage also wrote this. In regards to Kyle Rittenhouse, I can say with assurance in every fiber of my being, I have no ill will towards him. I never have. And you're wondering, well, where'd you get that? Well, Gage sent it to me. He emailed this to me. And yes, when he emailed it to me, he was under the assumption that I was going to share it because I told him, don't send me anything that you don't want me to share. But he did send this to me. So he has no problem with me sharing this. Okay, I'd like to know, Gage, what is your current feelings toward Kyle Rittenhouse? Uh, do you have any ill will towards him? Like my video, subscribe to my channel.